Enough is enough. The hysteria over JK Rowling has been out of control for quite some time. But whereas such outbursts usually die down over time, this one appears to be interminable. So on Thursday, the New York Times published a piece by Pamela Paul called In Defense of JK Rowling. This was one of those rare attempts by the publication to dial down the hysteria, to point out what Rowling has actually said, as opposed to what armies of online activists have collectively imagined that she has said. But the response has been unhinged. Because if your very identity is so anchored to the fantasies that you've created, it's very difficult to let them go. See, whenever I'm in, engaged in discussions about J.K. Rowling's supposed transphobia on social media, I always ask for her detractors to quote a single transphobic thing that she's said. If she's really the monster they claim she is, that should be easy, right? But they never can provide a transphobic quotation because there aren't any. What they'll do instead is post a link to a video by an influencer who is committed to a bad faith interpretation of her words, or who will claim the power to seek, guess her secret thoughts. Either that, or they'll change the definition of transphobia entirely so they can justify the smear. Take a look at this post by a writer for the Huffington Post. He says, let's make this really simple and clear. If you claim, as JK Rowling does, that trans women should not be in spaces designated for women, you are saying that trans women are not really women. That is transphobic. We shouldn't support people who are transphobic. So if you have nothing whatsoever against trans people and you support equal rights for all, but you also understand that women's safety depends upon the recognition of the reality of biological sex, you're suddenly a transphobe. This activist has decided that you hate people who you don't in fact hate. No more discussion because he knows your private thoughts better than you do. The thing is, some of us are still interested in evidence and rationality and the value of not interpreting your opponent's views in the most uncharitable way. Some of us are adults, in other words. None of this would matter, of course, if it was just a few crazed anime avatars on social media, but it's not. Just a couple of days before the New York Times op-ed defending Rowling, there had been an open letter by members of the paper staff accusing their colleagues of anti-trans bias. One of the signatories to this letter, a well-known writer and journalist called Gretchen Falcon Martin, posted a tweet expressing a desire to slit J.K. Rowling's throat. And of course, Rowling continues to receive endless death and rape threats on a daily basis from people who claim to be on the right side of history. Well, if they're right, the future looks pretty grim. And then the Human Rights Campaign, an LGBTQ plus civil rights body based in Washington, D.C., with over 800,000 followers on Twitter, posted a thread which made the following extraordinary claims. J.K. Rowling apparently has compared being trans to conversion therapy, has questioned hormone replacement therapy despite lacking any medical expertise, and incorporated transphobic plots into her mystery novels. But this is what she has actually said about conversion therapy. She said, many, myself included, believe we are watching a new kind of conversion therapy for young gay people who are being set on a lifelong path of medicalization that may result in the loss of their fertility and or full sexual function. Now, what does she mean by this? Well, as Hannah Barnes' new book has revealed, between 80 to 90% of adolescents who were referred to the Tavistock Pediatric Gender Clinic were same-sex attracted. There is a strong correlation between gender nonconformity in youth and being gay in adult life. Members of the staff at the Tavistock itself joked that soon there would be no gay people left. And whistleblowers revealed that homophobia was endemic. JK Rowling is not in any way comparing being trans to conversion therapy. She is saying that young gay people are at risk of being transitioned to better accord with society's heterosexual expectations. She isn't in fact talking about trans people at all. Here's what she actually thinks about trans people. I respect every trans person's right to live any way that feels authentic and comfortable to them. I'd march with you if you were discriminated against on the basis of being trans. She's also said, of course trans rights are human rights, and of course trans lives matter. And I believe the majority of trans identified people not only pose zero threat to others, but are vulnerable for all the reasons I've outlined. Trans people need and deserve protection. Wow, what a hateful transphobe. <laughs> and what about the HRC's claim that Rowling has questioned hormone replacement therapy d despite lacking medical expertise? Well, I presume they're talking about her concerns about puberty blockers. Now, the CAS review into the treatment of children with gender dysphoria emphasized that there is a lack of evidence to justify the use of these drugs, which are almost always a precursor to cross-sex hormones. Expert studies are finding more and more evidence of potential health risks of puberty blockers, 
So if it's Rowling's lack of medical expertise that disqualifies her from commenting on them, don't worry, because there are plenty of experts available who are reaching the same conclusions. And then there's the claim that Rowling has incorporated transphobic plots into her mystery novels. Well, this isn't true in the least. When her book Troubled Blood came out in 2020, written under the name of Robert Galbraith, a review in The Telegraph happened to say that the killer, at one point, disguises himself in a woman's coat. Cue the predictable outcry. The Pink News ran with, J.K. Rowling's latest book is about a murderous cis man who dresses as a woman to kill his victims. <laughs> Except it wasn't at all. Top tip for literary critics, always read the book before attempting to criticise it, because that will prevent you from looking like an idiot. Next on the thread of lies by the Human Rights Campaign, we had this. In 2019, Rowling defended a researcher who was fired for being transphobic. The end result? A court agreed, and the researcher was not reinstated. Except that wasn't the end result at all. This is a reference to the case of Maya Fostata, a tax expert who sued her employer for discrimination. In June 2021, the decision of the tribunal in the Fostata case was overturned by the High Court, with the judge ruling that her views were protected in law by the Equality Act. Fostata wasn't being transphobic at all. She was expressing the legally protected belief that biological sex is real. So not only has the HRC got its tweet entirely backwards, it's also repeated a libelous claim against Forstarter. And you would think a human rights organisation might want to get this kind of thing right. Well, they've deleted that tweet now, so that's OK, isn't it? But let's move on to the HRC's next tweet. This one is just as libelous, and it hasn't been deleted. This says, rolling up her transphobia to new levels in 2020 by publishing a manifesto defending her transphobic beliefs and disparaging the community. Yeah, that didn't happen. What actually happened is that Rowling was being bombarded with rape and death threats for liking a tweet by a gender critical feminist. And so, so she wrote a measured and compassionate statement on her website to outline her actual views. She reiterated her support for the rights of trans people and calmly explained that her experiences of domestic abuse had made it clear to her that feminists were right to raise concerns about the threat to single sex spaces that may result from gender self-identification not a transphobic manifesto at all, just sensible and liberal reflections on the importance of safeguarding. Recent revelations of male prisoners being housed in female prisons have, of course, vindicated that point of view. And then we have this from the HRC. Rowling apparently mocked the use of the phrase people who menstruate, ignoring the fact that not everyone who menstruates identifies as a woman. Well, she wasn't ignoring that at all. She was making the point that there has been a concerted effort to erase the word woman in favor of misogynistic sounding phrases such as people who bleed and menstruators. But for the HRC, a woman is an identity category. For most of us, it's a biological reality. Again, no evidence of transphobia there. And finally, as the piece de resistance of this thread of lies and distortions, we had this. In 2021, Rowling proceeded to criticise police for using a person's correct gender identity in their reporting. And they appended a screenshot of Rowling's tweet in which she pointed out that the victims of rape were being told that their attackers were women. That a rapist with a penis was a woman if he said he was. And that the victim and the police must respect the gender identity of the worst kind of criminals. Rowling was simply pointing out how Orwellian this is. And she was right. It's not about hating trans people, it's about prioritising victims of rape over the hurt feelings of their rapists. Carl Sagan was fond of saying that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. The extraordinary claim that Rowling, a known philanthropist and campaigner for equal rights, is actually a frothing fascist bigot who hates people because of how they choose to identify, is so far off the mark that it doesn't really require much further discussion. The burden of proof is always on those who make the claim. And they have been asked endlessly to produce evidence of Rowling's transphobia, and they failed again and again. 